Hey, Sam back in the studio and wanted to give a quick little tutorial, kind of my uh, five minute here on miking a guitar cabinet. <clears throat> Something that uh, if you went into a big studio, probably the engineers would know exactly kind of how to do that and have their experience with it. And, but I know <clears throat> a lot of times uh, someone like myself or maybe you're in that situation where you would like to just record yourself so you're not going to a big studio and you're going to try to just kind of uh, do it yourself or so a couple of simple easy uh, tips to record yourself uh, record a amp amplifier if you're an electric guitar player <clears throat> so first thing is microphones and there's a whole bunch of different mics that you can um, choose from I have four mics uh, on my 412 cabinet right now and many times in the studio here since I have more mics and more inputs I most likely would run all four of them at the same time and the reason for that is if the mics are um, all equal distant from the speakers so there shouldn't be any delay effect from the time that the, the sound is getting to the mic from the speaker then there shouldn't be any phase issues or problems uh, and then with differences of microphones, here I have an older uh, 57 right here on a, a top cabinet. Um, here I have one of the newer uh, Beta 57s. Uh, even between these two mics being both 57s, um, an Audix version of a 57. Um, here is a Sennheiser mic that kind of hangs over your cabinet. You see these live a lot. Each one of these mics will have a slightly different sound to them, different tone that they capture. So the first thing is just mic selection and sometimes obviously it's whatever you got uh, lying around that you can use. But if you have more than one input and you have more than one microphone that you can uh, run off a cabinet, I highly recommend, I know the old school way of doing it is just 157 on the cabinet, but there's really a lot to be said for capturing a full nice big sound having more than one mic and sometimes even uh, two or three. So as far as mics goes, mics go, I really think that it doesn't, it's not so much about going out there and finding a perfect mic as much just maybe getting one or two decent mics. And the most important part, which I'm going to give you a little bit of advice about is uh, placement, where you're going to place these microphones. And I can't tell you how many times that I've been to a live situation or even in a recording studio where an engineer, for whatever reason, maybe working quickly or maybe didn't know or not sure, but a lot of times guys just grab a microphone stand, grab a mic, slap it up against the cabinet any old place. Sometimes guys have put a little piece of tape on their cabinets and that, they, that they've found is the sweet spot, so maybe the guy just mics it right there. But really, <clears throat> a good engineer using their ears will uh, specifically place this mic in a spot that sounds uh, to your taste and to your liking to what fits the song and the part that you're playing too. If you're playing a full rhythm part you might go for a little bit beefier tone that's got more mid and low end. If you're doing a lead part uh, like what I'm working on today right now I'm micing up for a lead part then you might uh, mic in a little bit different way. So a general uh, idea or concept with a 57 right here would be that the closer you get kind of to the outside of the speaker and if you angle it so that the diaphragm is not parallel with the <clears throat> grill here then you should um, get a little bit brighter sound. Now how if I'm the only person here in the studio um, can I really dial in a good sound because uh, obviously I need to have a guitar in my hand um, and uh, it's hard to do a bunch of things at once and also hard to hear sometimes what's exactly coming in. So this is my little trick that I figured out kind of recording myself uh, many times um, and I have a couple things to help me do that. The first thing is um, uh, I like to use uh, my in-ears that I normally use on stage. So these are custom molded uh, monitors that, that um, twist and lock into my ear. I know not everyone has these, but a lot of guys that play live have uh, in-ears like this. So these are a great tool for miking up a cabinet here. And what I'll do, I'll tend to do is pop these in and plug them into my Pro Tools or my recording software. And then after I have these in, because I want to hear more of what's being recorded, 
Um, I'll put these in and then I'll put a pair of headphones uh, that are pretty clampy and also help cut out sound. Or sometimes guys even get the uh, uh, the noise canceling or get the head the tighter headphones that construction workers use to cut out um, loud sounds. So something like that. You can probably buy those at Home Depot. Um, so you're going to put these in and it's going to give you a chance to hear more of what's just coming from your um, from your recording software. And then the second thing I like to do, and this is really popular, most guitar players now have some kind of access to a looper pedal. So for miking up a cabinet, many times what I'll do is I record a little bit of the part that I'm going to be recording with the looper pedal and just set it to loop. And then I can play it through the speakers and I have my hands free without having a guitar in, uh, in order to um, hear what's coming exactly out of the speaker. So you can see here, that uh, I just played a little loop. I'm gonna set that off my looper to play. So here's a little bit of the lead part that I'll be playing. It's coming out of the speakers right now. You're just hearing what's coming into the camera. And with a pair of headphones on, now I can find that perfect sweet spot which is gonna sound good for this part. So that would be one way to isolate and just hear what's more coming from your uh, recording rig. And what I tend, again, to listen for as I'm moving this mic around is just tiny little movements you're going to notice are going to make a big difference on what the mic is capturing. More high-end, more mid-range, uh, more detail, uh, delays. A lot of times I have something that has a delay on it here and I'll listen for the repeats. And as I move these mics around, um, it'll capture different things. Uh, and last, do not be scared also, I didn't mention this, um, to try different microphones. Uh, also, I have a Sennheiser, which is normally considered a Tom microphone. Uh, great for especially a rhythm sound that you're recording. I'll put this right up on the uh, grill and uh, put a stand and have it right up close. And it's a great sound to blend in with your 57s. Or I also have here uh, some of my favorite microphones are made by a company called Aventone. And uh, this right here is a, a CK7, which is a FET mic. And it, the nice thing about this mic is if you have your vocal mic, I use this on vocals as well, but a lot of times a vocal mic has a 10 dB pad that you can switch on there. And then with that 10 dB pad on, you can put this right up against the grill of the speaker cab and it still should be fine. So here I have four different mics. They're going to capture sound in four different ways. And in the next video, if you look ahead of my videos, uh, I'm going to put up how to mix four different mics uh, together to create one really nice, warm, full sound that'll sit really well in the mix. So jump ahead to that video and you can catch how I mix uh, all of these into one. Thanks.